If I told you that living and eating a plant-based lifestyle caused a lot of problems for your health and for the planet, you wouldn't be surprised. Most people who watch this channel live the carnivore or keto life and are on at least an animal-based diet of some kind, if not fully carnivore. But the scientific data is coming out showing that being vegan isn't exactly a life plan for a long and optimal health, nor is it even being a plant-based diet won't get you there which we can define, by the way, as getting 80% or more, or more of your caloric intake per day from plant sources. The evidence is showing that it is a recipe for disaster. Anyone familiar with the history of seed oils won't be surprised by that revelation, but I have some recent news stories that will help illustrate this problem for people in real time because even like a Whole Foods vegan approach doesn't work. The first of these stories is a peer-reviewed study published about a week ago in the Journal of Agricultural Food Chemistry called plant-based meat analogs weaken gastrointestinal digestive function and show less digestibility than real meat in mice. Now there's one flaw with the study and it's pretty obvious. It's a study done in mice and we're not mice. Now the reasons these studies are done in mice and not on humans is that pretty much any publication in the world will not publish studies that don't conform to strict modern standards for human subjects testing meaning that some studies will be pretty much impossible to do on humans, such as a study like this. Plus, there are just logistical problems for having a multi-year study on human diet. But even animal testing will get some interesting data that is applicable to humans. Note the method they use here for testing their hypothesis about the effect of plant versus animal-based proteins on digestion. From the finding section of the study, quote, Mice were fed a standard chow diet during a 10-day acclimation period. After that, they were randomly divided into four groups, 16 mice in each group, two mice per cage, and fed a pork diet, a plant-based pork analogous diet, a beef diet, and a plant-based beef analog diet, respectively. Mice were allowed self-feeding of water and diets for 68 days. The pork or beef longissimus dorsi muscles, plant-based meat analogs, were purchased from commercial companies. And the ingredient composition and main component contents of the meat analogs can be seen in our previous study, end quote. I'll try to put that, I'll try to put the, this study a link to it in the pinned comment. Anyway, they fed them the longissimus dorsi, which if you watch my video on the anatomy of a ribeye steak, you'd know is the eye of the ribeye. They fed the mice ribeye beef steaks and their equivalent from pigs used standard grocery store quality meat. It's honestly pretty incredible when you think about it. The researchers were practically comparing a carnivore diet or an animal-based diet to the proposed plant-based diet that our rulers want to impose on the rest of all of us. And with all that in mind, here's what the researchers found with their study. Plant-based meats, think beyond or impossible burgers, are far less digestible and actually harm all the key biomarkers for gut health compared to test subjects given real animal proteins. In other words, plant-based alternatives harm those who eat them. They're not very digestible, which means the nutrients that you think you're getting from those items aren't actually available to you, at least not in any real amount, which means the average person consuming them are kind of wasting their time at the very best. The fact that this was published in a major agriculture and food industry journal is a big victory for those of us who advocate for animal-based diets of some kind or another. Don't be surprised that plant-based proteins are less digestible. Most of us already know that plants are loaded with anti-nutrients and other naturally occurring chemicals that make the nutrients found in these quote-unquote foods barely accessible to human beings from the begin with, especially when you factor in the fact that glucose competes with nearly every nutrient in plants for absorption by the body, and one thing that plants have to some degree in them are sugars. Which is why the story here makes obvious sense to carnivores, but not to the general public, because the general public still believes good health equals eating your veggies. And it's interesting that a mainstream news outlet bothered to publish this. So here's your next one. Headline from the Washington Examiner. Vegans are 43% more likely to suffer from broken bones. Study. Now, if you do even a simple Google search for vegan and broken bones, you'll find a lot of horror stories about vegans breaking their hips which is one of the worst bone breaks imaginable. And advice will be found abundantly for how vegans can allegedly prevent this from happening to them. The best way, of course, is to eat an actually ancestrally appropriate diet of some kind that falls somewhere on 
what we tend to call the proper human diet spectrum. And I'm only like ambiguous about what I mean by that simply because I, there's a lot of debate in our circles about that. But vegans aren't all that interested in that, especially many of them say rather openly that they'd rather suffer from their dietary choices than do something as evil as eating the way an apex predator animal tends to eat. The study in question had huge institutional support, which is also just incredible. That doesn't happen often and is a sign of hope that we can successfully push back against this plant-based lunacy being promoted by political actors. Political actors who know nothing about human health, or if they do, they're malevolent. From the article, quote, A study has found that vegans are 43% more likely to suffer a broken bone injury than those who eat meat. The study published by BMC Medicine used results from an epic Oxford study to examine more than 55,000 residents in the United Kingdom between 1993 and 2001, and then again in 2010. The study also used UK National Health Service records to collect data from 2016, according to a report. While it's the largest study to date on the relationship between bone fractures and diet, researchers said the results merely, quote, suggest that bone health in vegans requires further research. Vegans were especially at risk for hip fractures, with results showing they suffered 2.3 times more cases than meat eaters. Vegetarians and pescatarians are also at a heightened risk, but not to the extent of, veg of vegans. Within the study was a citation to a study published years earlier that pointed to vegetarians having lower bone density than those who eat meat. I know you're shocked by this as much as I am. Results were self-reported and did not include the cause of fractures in their reports. Researchers speculated the causes could be a lack of calcium or protein in vegans' diets or the fact that they tend to have lower body mass indexes, end quote. Look, most of this plant-sourced calcium is just not bioavailable to humans for absorption by the body, or at least not in any good rate. And it's just a simple fact. Oxalates, you may not know this, are actually called calcium oxalates and cause harm to your body. Calcium oxalate builds up in the body. If you start a carnivore diet and eliminate the vast majority of plants from your diet, you find that you experience a phase that's unpleasant, but mildly called oxalate dumping, which manifests in a variety of ways. But this is where your body passes the oxalates it's stored from eating plants. It's not fun. It includes body aches, acne, rashes, and other just physically obvious side effects, many of them visible. But it's essentially calcium crystals being dumped by the body because little to none of it was absorbed in the digestion process. It's not that plants like calcium. It's that what they have isn't available to humans for any positive use in any real amount. Thus, those on plant-based diets suffer very real consequences when they eat that way. But I want to hear from you. Are you someone who experimented with a plant-based life? Were you vegan or vegetarian for a long time? If so, what negative effects did you encounter? What positive effects can you report? Look, we should always be interested in the truth. That is just a fact. We should be seekers of the truth. That's why we went carnivore, because all the data pointed us here. And if we're frank, there are some positive outcomes for some people who adopt a plant-based life, mostly because the standard Occidental diet or standard American diet is just so bad that eating anything that isn't based on processed foods will give you improvements. That is a fact. But I want to know your story. So in the comments, please let me know what happened to you when you went plant-based or if you were ever a vegan. I've told my story before in a previous video, but about a decade or so ago, I'd have to actually go look through my, my education records on this, but about a decade or so ago, I spent a whole semester in a green economics class doing a personal project where I ate meat only once a week and lived a 95% whole foods plant-based diet. I was told by the professor that I would lose body fat and get very healthy very quickly. The truth is this, the opposite happened. I gained body fat. I lost strength in the gym, got at least two colds that semester, which is weird, and was generally miserable. The professor was flabbergasted, but couldn't dispute the data I'd collected either. That's my plant-based story, at least the quick version of it anyway. What's yours? Let me know in the comments, please. Like and subscribe if you haven't. It really does help. Share this on social media if you can. That helps a lot as well. I'm Anthony Stein, and thanks for watching today.